brought in the, some of the best of the best. They helped us, uh, they helped us lead, co-lead the 1245 class, great friends of ours, they are phenomenal speakers, incredible people. Stand to your feet and make a little welcome, <laughs> Jeff and Chuck <laughs> You're, you're way nice. I thought they were about to announce themselves. Wow. When I got that, I was like, Ashley and Clayton are teaching today. Did you see how we shifted into our normal Yes, like yeah, because we, li we live in patterns. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just go into a pattern. You guys, it's so great to be back home. We feel like this is our home, and um, we miss this class. Um, if you ever want to see us and hug us, because we love hugging you, and there's some of our amazing teachers, Brian and Nancy. And Sarah and Keith share the class and platform with us. We love them. And, um, and Lizette and Ruben help us in the second class. Truth be told, when he asked us to lead the second class, I was a little sad. And I told Jeff, it's not about the first class. It's about serving God's people. And he's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, myself. Because <laughs> we all know how, I mean, this is a great class. I mean, come on. I mean, started by Mary and Melvin Banks. I'm, following them wow i like um, that yeah <laughs> do we have raffle tickets i think we're supposed to have raffle not till 10 50 we're going to do this at 10 oh, 50 so more people come in ah, i got gotcha. you okay okay, okay i got gotcha. you okay gotcha. so why don't we uh start with prayer and then we just jump right okay. in thank you beloved father god for this opportunity to share with with uh like-minded uh holy spirit filled christ-minded people Thank you that the words that come out of Michelle and I's mouth are not from us, that they are guided by the Holy Spirit to deliver a message that needs to be heard by somebody or everybody in this class. Thank you that we, that we are equally yoked in, in our goals and desires to be, to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, to, uh, to further our relationship with you, beloved Father God, so that we can be your hands and feet, not only just on this earth, but especially first and foremost to our spouse on this earth. In the, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. And so this, this uh, month's theme is love letters to your spouse. And Michelle doesn't know this, but I spent uh, a lot of time last night researching um, about the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, because Clayton and Ashley felt very guided and felt very moved by that part of the by that part of the Bible um, to to create that theme for this year. And it's love letters, and you know it, it changes month by month by month. And I spent um, about an hour reading a 162-page doctoral thesis. Wow. <laughs> so um, I'm a morning person, and Jeff's a night person, and that was just a perfect example of him staying up late at night. Exactly. So it, it, just the, the stuff that I gleaned out of this is amazing. But What you don't know is I woke up at 4 o'clock, and I saw your notes, and I shared a post this morning about it. <laughs> So it's like we go for it, Jeff. I'll, I'll take care of the We're rest. yin and yang. We yes, do this. Yes. Um, so what we want to start with, and I know we have about 20 minutes, and um, I know your responsibility is so high, and you want to go through all of it. If we if we skim through some stuff, are you okay with that? Let's skim. Let's just do that. Um, this slide is so important to me, and I think it just says so much. You know, we, there is so much content that has been shared on the stage. But what I want to share is that marriage, this is an area of our life that can cause the most pain and it can also give you the most pleasure. And that's so powerful because if we look at marriage and we understand that it does sometimes bring pain and not sometimes, it will bring pain at different seasons, but it will bring you so much pleasure. And which one, just shout out, do you want to stay in? That was pretty weak, so let's do it again. <laughs> Which area do you want to stand out at? Scream it. Pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. this is not a trick question. <laughs> so do I. I want to stay in pleasure. So um, what do you want to add on that? Um, that I absolutely love the pleasure part. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. Uh, in my opinion, it's okay sometimes the pain part. You're so it's, right, It's Jeff. okay. You're so Be right. Because given the opportunity to learn and to grow, and take lessons away from that pain part, that's, that's, the great, that, that's the great thing about marriage. And like the Song of Solomon, it's God's example of how he wants to be in relationship with us. And then we take that example and we put it into relationship in our marriage. 
Yes, because you know, for a while I didn't like when we were having heated fellowship. I wanted to skip through that. But what happens if you're having heated fellowship, you enjoy the pleasure and the sweetness so much more. Because you're, as long as you're fighting for a result and not fighting just to win, because if I win, he loses and right. we both lose. Right. If he wins, I lose and we both lose because we're one. Uh, you want to read this? You know, in, in, in 1 John 4, 18, there, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And then it also says in Jude, Jude 1, uh, second verse, Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. So I, I, I recommend that you take some time to meditate on those two scriptures and and find out what lands in your heart with those two. Those two kind of sat really well with us. Yeah, we can put that um, um, slide up if anyone wants to take a picture of those or write those ones down. And then we will jump right into... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump past that one and go to the next one. Oh, baby, and I have my little thing I brought. You have your little thing you brought. <laughs> and while she gets her little thing that she brought, she... <laughs> One of the things that, that I love about my wife is she is so spontaneous. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with her, but she's very spontaneous. And I'm so, gonna take that as a compliment. It's very much a compliment. <laughs> so last night, last night we get home and she's, she brings out this little treasure looking, treasure chest looking box, opens it and turns it over and just dumps it. And out of this box just comes cards and letters and stuff and more stuff. And we sit at the table and we start shifting through all of this stuff. And what a great segue to this month. She's like, you know what this stuff is? They're birthday cards, they're love letters. I showed you, you this. I said, do you know what this is? And then he said, you paused for a second. Did you know right away? Well, this kind of gives it away up at the top. So I paused and I read that. <laughs> So he so, cheated. I cheated um, a this little. This is a piece of our tablecloth that our wedding um, our coordinator. Wedding table. Yeah, our wedding table. And she cut a piece, and everyone in the wedding coordination party signed it for us, wishing us a ma an amazing marriage. And then um, I started to find, I found this paper, and this paper is what, Jeff? Um, so we were on a cruise, and I had everything planned out, and I decided to write out my pre vows. These, I guess, were my pre-vows because this is when I was going to ask her to marry me. Um, and what's cool about it is I, I love the number eight. It's one of my favorite numbers. And just writing this, I ended up with eight promises. So it was, it was really amazing. And I got up in front of, in front of 3,000 people in, a, in an auditorium and a stage, and I got down on my knee and I proposed to her. Yeah, not a, it was, I, uh, I had women coming up to me and saying, does he have a brother? And I'm like, I, and I remember when I stood up that day, I, um, I love sharing and blessing people, but when the spotlight's on me, I sat back down and they kept saying, stand up. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, why didn't you do this privately? And um, yeah, I, I started to get down on one knee and she sits down. I sit down too. <laughs> I'm like, and, um, the nervous energy, right. And, um, so we read this yesterday and I asked him a deep, profound question. I said, we live in a space, Jeff and I, where I really try to choose bravery over comfort. And what I mean by that is sometimes I'll ask a question and I don't always ask it with the greatest delivery, but I said, Jeff, do you feel that you lived, you have lived out in 14 years married to me, all these promises you made me? And you said, I said, not, not a hundred percent. And I said, thank you for That's being, my way of saying no. I said, thank you for being vulnerable. I said, but a lot of them you did. You really work hard to promise me these things and you did it. And um, Jeff's a poet and he doesn't even know it. But, but I like to show it. <laughs> stop, don't let's not go there. Um, okay, I'll stop. I don't want to blow it. Stop. And um, so as we're reading these things, I'm reading them out loud. But one of them says, and um, it says, I promise to be with you and only you and to find the part of our life that has, the part of my life that's always been missing and nothing can ever fill that empty space. I promise to listen to you with all my heart and my mind and to look at the things through your eyes and through the emotions the best I can. 
I promise to op be open and honest about everything, even if it makes me uncomfortable or challenges me at first, and then to figure out how I can turn it into a positive learning growth. That one just stuck with me because we, we challenge each other and we really want to do that, but we forget. So I was remembering when he spoke these to me and when he said these promises, but look how different the, the love letter would have been if he says, I promise I will never be open and honest with you. I promise I will always make you uncomfortable. And I promise when you challenge me, I will run into my castle and draw my drawbridge and I will protect myself from you. How would that have felt on that day he proposed? I would have been like, excuse me. I don't know me? if we can get this done. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm like, next? <laughs> Just kidding. Right. Um, but, you know, that's what happens when we sat and opened all these things. And I found the one I wrote. I remember going to the bank before I, um, I married him. Um, and not to change my bank account. That was weird. That sounds, uh, sounds so weird. I went to a bank that we were working at and I asked him just for a piece of paper and I just wrote him a, a quick note and I asked the pastor to give it to him. And I bought some lottery tickets and I even had the receipt in there. And I said that um, I bought you these tickets because I pray today you win the lottery financially because I won the lottery husband today. When I say I do. Yeah. And that was beautiful. Yeah, and that was that that day. But fast forward, I have been judgmental, I have been mean, I have been rude, I have, I have told him I would love him. I even said to him one time when we were dating, I promise this is the meanest I'll ever be to you. And he got all excited. And I, I said, I was very nice that day. Can, can we put that on the contract or how, how, do, we, how do we make sure that that's, that's true? <laughs> can I get your blood on this paper? Right. And, um, but you know, at that moment, that was my truth. And we sit and talk about it, and we, we, we recently talked about it, and I said, we, we have a good marriage. How do we have a great marriage? Yeah. I'm a good wife. How do I become a great wife? You know, how do I love you in your brokenness, and how do I serve you in your brokenness, and how do I love you and lean in more when you're mean and rude mm -hmm. because you're hurting? Mm -hmm. How do I lean in more because love is never about withdrawing, and that's what I do. It's about leaning in and loving and pressing through and telling him that I love you even when you're insecure right now. And I'm still cheering you on even when you don't feel it. And even when that abandonment rises up in you, I'm never gonna leave you. But more importantly, Papa's never gonna leave you. So you can never ever be in a broken state if me and him are for you. That's so good, I love that. I love that. Um, and when we're, we're talking about love letters and we're, we spent some time reading these to each other and revisiting this, because the, these have been in, in a box for 10, 12 14, years, yeah. 14 years. And the Song of Solomon starts off as a love letter, starts off as pursuit. That's one of the things that we talk about in our marriage classes. That's one of the four pillars is pursuit. And what happens sometimes is we forget to pursue. Mm -hmm. And we were talking to each other and we say, how do we get back? How do we get back to this? How do we get back to writing these? You know, she, I, I feel so bad when she looks at me and she goes, why don't you write me love letters anymore? A brave conversation. I said, what, why did he stop? You know, why did you stop writing me love letters? And what was your answer? Is it the same today? I, I think I used the word familiar. Yeah. In that conversation, I used the word familiar. And, and that's, a, that's a dangerous place in marriage, familiar. And you said something that you said, but I'm with you all the time now. Yeah, 24 seven. We're, I'm with we're you 24 /7. seven. I'm always saying nice stuff to you. <laughs> uh, and, and guys, I, don't say that. What immediately <laughs> rose up in my spirit and my thought was, I have made it difficult for you to write me a love letter. Mm, wow, yeah. So we don't have to, we, we have 10 minutes, so we're gonna flip through this quickly. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna start getting to the, the, the point, but the point is, is we, we, when we got to that conversation, something came to my head. Again, the Holy Spirit, I love that he's talking to me. He said, how do we become a living love letter to your spouse? Amen. Yeah. Living love letter, not just writing it down, but becoming a living love letter to your spouse. 
And then what also came to my head, and this is through mentorship with, with Clayton and Ashley, is to be a living love letter to my spouse, that script, that paper gets wiped clean at the end of the day. Mm. I have to rewrite it every single morning, every single day. And I tell you what, it gets a lot easier to write that when I start with my conversation with God. It's beautiful, Jeffrey. So we're going to talk a little bit about the seven keys of love and relationships. And this is basically kind of our, our way of, of suggesting ways to, be, to become that living love letter, to walk that live, living love letter out. So um, on the next slide, you, you see number one. You want to read that? Yes. Number one, the quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. And what that means is... If you have a healthy relationship with your spouse, with your key relationships, your children, your friends, then you're having a quality life. If you're striving and, I mean, fighting and having deep fellowship and it is pain, you're going to feel that pain in every area of your life. And how do you have those key relationships and make them the quality of what you want? 100%. And in one of, one of our Spark conferences, we had a, a gentleman stand up there and he did this, this uh, kind of acting out of holding a mirror. And down at the bottom it says, our partners just become a mirror of some aspect of ourselves that we don't usually see. And that's why God puts us together with our spouse, because God wants us to heal each other, wants to give us the opportunities to heal each other. And when somebody reflects something in you that you probably, or it, maybe it's a blind spot for you, or maybe it's something you don't think you really need to pay that much attention to, that's a great way to pay attention to it. And the blind spot that Jeff has shown me, it does appear over and over and over. And lots of times I don't want to receive it because it feels like pain. But really, instead of taking it in and internalizing it, which I'm doing now, and because um, Jeff says, when we give back the information, you can become defensive. And I was like, no, I'm not. And that's being defensive within itself. <laughs> we don't have time for all of that, Jeffrey. Right. That's a whole other class. We have seven minutes. That's a whole other class. All right. On the next slide. That's what he does to me, too. He does that whole thing. And I'm but like, you you're delivering. <laughs> Delivery. Pray for him, guys. Pray for By him. By the way, guys, don't do that. <laughs> Two. Two. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, baby. Uh, becoming embodying fully the love that we are. And, you know, there, there's so many tools, so many great teachers in these classes um, that if you just take little nuggets away each time and, and start working those nuggets into what you do on a daily, on how you respond on a daily, how you heal on a daily, how you grow in your relationship with God on a daily. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, and I really I say this a lot. It, loving somebody is never an outside game. It's an inside game. When you love from the inside, you will be everything you ever wanted and everything you ever needed because it's never an outside game. Jeff can never love me enough and serve me enough to be able to feel what I need to feel first in here, and that's from Papa first. When this gets right, then I can enjoy this more. He is not... He cannot, even if he tried, he can't fulfill everything because that's a place for only God to fulfill and you for know, us to enjoy. When we were do when putting together this class, we were listening to something, and this was super profound, and it really hit both of us, that people go into relationships, people go into, into oh, yeah. marriages, sometimes, sometimes with the mistaken belief that they're going to get love when they go into that relationship. I'm going to find a spouse so he can love me. Right. I'm going to find a wife so she can love me. The truth is, you go in a relationship. The, the most successful, rewarding relationships are the ones that go into that relationship looking for ways to give love. How can I love that spouse? How can he love his wife? All right, we're so going to run through So number three. These. I love this one. I love this way. So whose courage and whose vulnerability in this one, do you think? <laughs> Uh, courage. She is the most courageous woman I've ever met in my entire life. You make me more um, courageous, but thank we, you. Uh, again, th that's almost like a whole other class. I, I will tell you that I'm, he, Jeff says I'm um, fire, and his mom used to tell me that you're fire and he's water, and when you guys are together, you can make perfect steam. 
But if you don't watch out, it is going to be whoosh, and Steam it is. Steam can cause pressure, yes. Yes, and it can And it be, can also burn a little. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so number four, number four, I love this. I love this, I love this. Decide to make your spouse the most important thing. That again falls back to how do you become a living love letter to your spouse? Make her the most important thing next to your relationship with God. We always, we always emphasize that. You have to make sure that you're right in your relationship with God to be able to give that to your spouse. Number five, I love this one. This was so cool. I thought this was really smart how I, I know. did this. I love how you do slides. You just love it. Um, do you see where the little, uh, the little magnifying glass is? Yeah, Jeff is, is analytical, so when he loves these things, when they make sense. I'm all the feeling and hearts, and I'm like, give me more pink, give me more heart. <laughs> um, stop questioning your spouse intention. And you're taking the microphone glass to, to intent. Yes. And, and it's such an uncomfortable place when you're looking at your spouse and you're having that conversation and you're going, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that that little thing that you do I'm waiting for it and instead of listening to her heart listening to their heart listening to what they're really trying to say you're stuck in that inside pain looking for that oh here it comes again because Jeff has a belief and a hurt pocket that sometimes when you don't go deep enough to clean that out and I do too you clean a little bit out, but there's still some deep root in there. And then if I show up and trigger that again, he's like, see, I knew that was there. And that's the part he's talking about. The, I en love the this. enemy is looking. The enemy is looking for those things. The enemy is looking for those little tweaks. And, and when, you, when you don't pay attention to the truth, divorce is the story that they, that they are the bad person, but you want to marry the truth. You know, the devil is a liar. Devil, you know, in Jesus' name, you are gone. Devil, you are out of here. Get out of my head. Get out of my thoughts. Get out of my heart. Marry because the truth. The of, truth is. Marry the truth of she's, she's a daughter for of God. me. She's a daughter of God. She loves me. She wants to help me. She doesn't want to hurt me. Number, Number six. six. Instead of pulling line. back love, bring more love in. And little kids do this very well. Little kids do this very well. Someone could be crying or someone, and they want to run and go hug and run and go love. You know, we are very fortunate to have a grandson, and our grandson is a perfect example, example of God's love, of what we said. It's not about what he can give me. He can't give us anything at 15 months. He can't come up and tell me I'm good. He can't tell me I'm wonderful. He can't tell me how much he loves me. And, but what we're doing is Jeff and I are running a him, and we're loving him. And we're telling him we love you. We're praying over him. He does the cutest thing, Jeff. When we say love, what is he doing? He's just he loving his heart. It's love. just, he's like, I love you, I love you. And we're running to him. And that's what we should be doing to our spouses, is running to them and giving them more love, especially when they're irritable, rude, and not being so nice. Because that's when they need it the most. And we abort the mission and assignment because we want to protect ourselves instead of leaning into the pain. And we abort the mission way too soon. It's like, baby, what's hurting you and how can I love you? Okay, we got to move. Number seven, yeah, we've got like 13 seconds. to be <laughs> Number seven, to be the generous lover. You know, be a generous lover and it all gets solved. When you, when you throw love at the situation, I tell you what, it makes it such, so much better. You know, when, oh. you, when, when you think there isn't love, there is always love because it's in our very nature. That's got how God truly created us. I love that he said that last piece. When we think there isn't love, there is always love because it's our nature. When we sit with couples that are, are having a season of struggle and a season of not seeing each other's hearts, they say he just doesn't love me or she doesn't love me or I don't feel loved. It's such a lie because you are love. He is love. He is the perfect love. So even in the midst of the fight and the hurt, love is there. It's just being blinded and piled up with all the other junk that just needs to be moved out of the way. You are love. He is love. We are an experience and an expression of the perfect love. 
Amen. So I think we've got some raffle tickets to and raffle off. And this last off. one, you want to say that? No, no, it's not no. in there. Okay. So we've got some raffle tickets to uh, raffle off. Uh, we've got wonderful Clayton up here. So please yeah, yeah, pull yeah. out your raffle tickets. Give a round of applause for this handsome woo, 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 woo. Three. So we've got three gift cards, and um, there's one, one, there's two. And then and we also have the, the big one, which is two free tickets to Spark. So is that picking, three? So I'm picking five? Two couples. Five numbers? So five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Sarah, can we have you? Oh, you're running out. Um, hey, Gina. Gina, can we have you run these out? Okay, so the first one is um, three, for a $50 gift card, is 371 Seven six six nine. Seven six six nine. All right, congratulations. Woo! He's a KC fan. Who's going to KC's today? KC fan. <laughs> no KC fans. That's okay. I, I'm I'm for the uh, I'm for the team the win for Taylor's boyfriend. The, we're doing the, all these giveaways in, in celebration of Valentine's Day. Okay, the next one is for a free spark ticket for for two. Uh, the last three numbers are 702, 702. And how do we make sure that we give those tickets away? Oh, go talk to Clayton and Ashley. 702. Okay. All right, we'll pick another number. Go ahead, Jeff, you can do the next one. Okay, so this is for a $25 gift card. No, 50, it's 250, 225. Oh, oh, 225, so that's a total of 50. Um, ending in 7568, 7568. Seven five six eight seven five six eight. Go on, one to come out. We've got to visit everybody. All right, seven, five, six, eight. baby. Seven five six eight. Seven, five, six, eight. Okay. All right, those are yours. Okay, uh, spark tickets ending in seven five eight three. Pair of spark tickets seven five eight three. Do we have a winner? Do we have a winner? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Does nobody want to go to Spark? You just want the gift card? Oh, no, no. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, so, we'll do this one for, for Spark. Spark. This one for Spark. 7755. <laughs> 7755. 7755. Okay, all next right. one for Spark. Seven, six. No, 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 no. This one's for the gift card. Okay. We've already done two, two for Spark. This one's no, for the gift the card. The first one I did was in here. Okay. <laughs> 7659. Seven, six, five. Woo! Spark! Spark, please see Clayton. Okay, okay. last one for the gift card. Last, last one for a $50 gift card, 7583. 7583. 7583. 7583. 7583. Okay. Okay. All right. 7723. I feel this one. 7723. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, seven, seven, two, three. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Jesse has them all and he just hasn't checked his tickets. Seven, seven, two, three. Nope. nope. No? All right. All right, well, let's try. Seven, five, eight, six. Really? Woo! <laughs> all right. We love you guys. The last thing we want to leave you with is we want to tell you Take a moment, no matter how long it's been, and go back and talk about that wedding day that led up to that proposal. Revisit the things you guys said to each other. Any amazing love letters that you wrote to each other. Revisit what it felt like and revisit what you want to design for your marriage. Know how loved you are and know how blessed you are. Let's pray us out. If you Father, need to go to service, please feel free to go to service. Father God, thank you for a place to be able to talk about marriages and to serve one another, Father. We thank you for a church that loves you so much, but Father, that wants us to love ourselves and our spouse as much as we love you, Father. We thank you that you will bless each and every couple here. And Father, that nobody will ever feel unloved because you love us completely, Papa. We love you, and may Valentine's Day not be the only day that we show love, but it's every day walking out a perfect love letter from you to us and from us to our spouses. We love you, honor, and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. See you next week.